All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from, a, eh, it's not too sunny San Diego, but uh, it's sunny enough. And today I am delighted to be joined by Carol Day, who is in Washington. How are you doing, Carol? I'm doing really well. Thank you, John. I am Carol Dye. I'm in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C., and I'm a real estate agent with TTR Sotheby's International Realty. Yeah. And what we're going to talk about today, also, you're, you, you are obviously a lot very involved in your community. You're on the board of Sitar Arts Center, previously worked with organizations such as Children's Hospital Head Start and N Street Village. And, and you've also um, you know, worked with, created a, a book drive for DC charter schools, which is fantastic. But what we want to talk about today is is health right and for anybody who is in business whether you're in sales whether you're in anything else like you know looking after your health is a, is a, obviously a very very important thing um but but a lot of people today have focused i feel a lot of times they focus on physical health maybe maybe spiritual health to some degree maybe maybe not but they don't focus enough on mental health and i i mean I, and i believe there's a mental health crisis at the moment i think it's only going to get worse and stuff because i think we live in a very you know this connected society has disconnected people really badly and also has has totally reimagined if you like you know the concepts of of, of uh connection and 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 even even uh, building relationships with people and so um, you know, that's what I, I think that I think that a lot of people are are missing that whole mental component because they've allowed themselves to become so distracted by these things. So they're never they never spend any time with themselves, Carol. What John, you said you have a 19 year old son. Yes. And so you're really in tune with youth. And I'm from a generation that I was born in the 50s. Mm -hmm. So communication for us was on the telephone. Some might mm -hmm. think it was through the, you know, smoke signals going mm -hmm. up in the air, but it was a telephone and we didn't have instant gratification. We didn't know everything. We had to read an encyclopedia, but in order to communicate, we had to meet people. We didn't play video games. We played, we went bowling, we played pool. We you know, we went outside and played kickball and everything was engagement with other people. And, and I don't, I don't have my own children and, but I'm around a lot of young people and I feel this anxiety from them and they're constantly on their telephones. And I know you could speak to that mm -hmm. better than I can, but it's, I just, I, it, I can only say it blows my mind, but I also have empathy. I have compassion mm -hmm. and I feel a bit of a sadness because there is this wellness component. And you asked me, what is, where, where is my wheelhouse? What is my passion? Mm -hmm. And it is the connectivity of the soul, the brain, the body, the spirit, the being, because you can't just be healthy by going and taking um, a, a, a bike, you know, no. a, a, a class and, and being on your, your whatever machine. You have to take care of yourself from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and I think uh, I think you're cor you're correct about uh, about you know the young people the young people today. <laughs> I know yeah it's funny when you reach that time of life when you're talking about the young people today. Uh, uh, but but I do think but I think it's also in, uh, infecting I would say people of of other generations too because you see people are starting to become so caught up in their virtual worlds that and you know it's like when's the last time you had a conversation with somebody and they were talking to you and their phone buzzed and they immediately looked down at it checked it and then came back to the conversation as if that's completely socially acceptable right knowing that that person even comes from a generation where they know that's that's rude but they've become immune to it because we're so we we've decided that these things are more important than people well, you know, you just made me think of something else that I, you know, this is going to really sound, you know, I don't, it won't even sound old. It'll just sound 
sense sensitive mm -hmm. is when did we start walking around with a coffee cup? When was it okay to take your Starbucks into showing a house or mm -hmm. at a meeting? Like that's, that's not the way we grew up. You did not walk around with a, with a, a cardboard coffee cup. And I, I don't do it anymore because I, I mean, I did, mm -hmm. but not to show a house and not into a meeting with a client. But now people just do that. Like you just said, like looking down at their phone right now, my phone is completely away from me because I'm in this connected yeah. place with you. And I don't want to know what's going on with my phone, but I also come from a place where that's really easy for me. Right. If I know I have to be interrupted. Like I was on a zoom this morning and I was very involved in a real estate deal. So I didn't come on the camera until I put everything in place that had to be put in place. Mm -hmm. That's just common sense professionalism. Yeah, but I think you're right. I mean, we, we live in this kind of, you know, creeping casual culture now that seems to be, as I said, infecting everything. Uh, so what, what is your advice to people who are, like you said, I mean, maybe like we were talking about, you know, maybe you're, you're, you're looking after your physical health, maybe you're working out, you're eating right and everything, but, but things still don't seem to be falling into place for you. What, what advice do you have for people to, to start reaching and looking at the other parts that need to be in sync? It's a great question. You know, I want to just go back to a time where I felt like I had to work out constantly to be in shape mm -hmm. and I'm in better shape now and work out less. I meditate twice a day in the morning and at night. Um, I may miss a day, but I'm taking more time to go within, you know, I'm writing, I'm reading more. I'm listening to books on audible. I think it's really, I talked to my 20 year old admin today and she just bought something that is going to block her from using her phone so that she starts reading more. I, no. I said, wait, what? And it's called brick. Mm. And I guess it only allows you, you can ask your son a certain amount. He probably won't want to tell you. <laughs> it only allows you a certain amount of time to be on the phone and it closes apps down so you can't even get onto the apps so that it disciplines you wow. to get into reading. So the answer to that question is, and it sounds so simple and it's taken me years to get here is balance. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that's really happened to me in, in truly the last couple of weeks, I found out that a lot of people, a lot of dear friends are ill with cancer and whatever other things and all ages, you know, yeah. old, young. And I thought to myself, okay, I have to start really believing what I preach. And that is to be calm, to be in flow, to not worry and to pray and know that everything is going to be all right. It sounds simple. It sounds Pollyanna, but you only have two choices. You can be nervous or not <laughs> yeah. you can be positive you can be negative and that's really been the key to my life even though i, I i've gone off yield you know the yield sure. signs pull me off but when you come into this place of really knowing that everything's going to be fine you have to work out you don't have to make yourself crazy working out i mean i have all kinds of things that i can teach people but I really think beginning the beginning and the end of the day with gratitude and prayer is is a way to set the tone for your day. Mm -hmm. No, I I, I I totally agree with you. I love I love what you I love what you outlined there. And and, and it is I think I think a lot of it is coming back to I mean, it's kind of sad that you have to have an app to stop yourself using your phone when you have an off button. But but then again, I'm probably just as guilty as everyone else. So I'm not going to heart labor that point. But um, but yeah, but the idea of being with yourself and and, and uh, you know exploring you know gratitude and you know blessings and all of that because it, again we're caught up and I think it's it's all generations now we're caught up in this weird comparison culture right because you know 
you know, the kids are on TikTok, other people are on Instagram, the older people are on Facebook or whatever, and they're constantly seeing other people's lives and they're thinking, oh, look, Carol looks like she's having a way better life than me. You know, and all the RS snapshots in time where you've really no idea what's going on. But, but that whole thing can send you into a tailspin if you're not careful. Well, so I, it, true, but I want to go back to what you just said. Yeah. Because I listen, I'm around a lot of coaches and people that help other people. I'm involved with The Go-Giver. It's a book. Oh, yes, Bob I know them. Mm -hmm. Bird know. Root and, yeah, I know Bob, yeah. And Noemi is involved in it. And mm -hmm. one of the people that's there, his name is Grant Mueller. And he was, he coaches people in from Colorado, but all over the country. And he went a different road last week. And he said, and I know I'm not quoting him. I, these are what I think I came away with mm -hmm. is to just write down how much you like yourself. Hmm. You know, we can all say gratitude. Oh, yeah. I'm going to make a million dollars next Monday. Like you can write all those things down, but learning to love myself has been something over the last two years that has really taken me into a deeper place is that worthiness is the word that I will use confidence and worthiness. And you're not going to get any of that, like what you just said, by comparing yourself to anybody else, mm -hmm. because most people are probably lying, yeah. who are saying, well, I don't know what I don't any other word I might use might not mm -hmm. be a nice one. Mm -hmm. But it they're full of it. And yeah. why do you want to be them anyway, just yeah. be you? I mean, isn't that why we're here? We only get one ride in this merry go round. Yeah. Well, as my as my compatriot Oscar Wilde said, uh, uh, you, you know, you might as well be yourself because everyone else is taken. So I was. You know, I lived in Ireland and I read a lot of 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 Oscar because I lived. I I was an au pair uh -huh. with a woman that was doing her graduate studies in literature at Trinity. Oh no. Nice. And so she made me read and. I just loved learning the Irish literature and people mm. like Oscar Wilde. It was the best. Yeah, and it, but he, but what he said is absolutely true. He had so many great uh, wisdom and insights, you know, about being yourself. But I like I like what you said. That thing about actually asking yourself what you like about yourself. That's that's probably a question most of us have never asked, right? Uh, you know, we probably sometimes ask other people, "Oh, what do you think is great about me?" <laughs> Well, but not asking ourselves, we're because because at the end of the day, we can't really lie to ourselves. But isn't that gratitude, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that gratitude? If you say, you know what, I really loved my time with John today. It's mm -hmm. it's not necessarily about me, yeah, but yeah. it's about the energy that we had between us. That's gratitude. You know, if you went through, if I go through this whole entire day, I can find a lot that brought me joy but i also feel and i started my day working out and then in a bob berg go give her coffee time and it was heavy we had a right. lot of intense conversations in there but the thing about that community with bob berg and with kathy tajanel is love support and so much authenticity and i, I haven't met most of the people that are on that screen, but they feel like some of my closest friends now because of what Bob has created. Yeah, no, Bob's a great guy. Uh, but I like what you just said there, though, about the authenticity piece, uh, because I mean that was that was Merriam Webster's word of the year last year because it's getting thrown around all over the place, and people are saying, "Yeah, you need to be more authentic, and brands need to be more authentic, and everybody needs to be more authentic," and. It, it, it's it was it talked about so much that it for me it just became so inauthentic sounding it's like how, how can we be inauthentic about being authentic um but i do think at the end of the day that that is what people are craving especially in a world where there's so much that's fake or there's so much all of you know all the stuff out there people are craving authenticity and trust they just want to be trust they want to be able to trust that you are who you are and you 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 are the kind of person that you come across as well and that's bob's whole message isn't it it's about working with people whether you're working or they're your friend it's to know like and trust mm -hmm. and 
I have a friend, we choose a word every year and last week's, last year's word was truth. It was the word truth in all caps and mm. so much truth. I had a lot of stuff happen last year that challenged me and what really was the revelation was learning the truth. And I think the word, like you said, authenticity became diluted in a way because it got yeah. used so much, but truth that word is in neon and it brought me into this year with a whole new way of beingness mm -hmm. yeah the, it, it is it is it is really interesting because i think that's what's lacking i think that's what the root of a lot of issues are with people and especially i think a lot of uh issues with people uh, around you know mental health and stuff is that is that they they don't trust people they feel alone they feel isolated and they don't trust people because they just don't know who people really are anymore because they're as you said there's there's that lacking in authenticity people are very chameleon like nowadays people are very different can be different online offline all of this kind of stuff and i think people are feeling quite disconnected from human beings and that's not good for your mental health because like you said you're part of a bob berg's group highly supportive uh you know people who care about each other trust each other i mean there's a great power and energy that comes out of that but that's missing for a lot of people well but you started this conversation with what 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 is my yeah what do i want to do how do i want to help and i'm glad that you looped us back to wellness because there are groups like Bob's, but that's really why I was led to do these podcasts is people don't have to feel lonely. They don't have to feel desperate. They don't have to do drugs to find happiness. You can, there's ways to reach out. There's, there's Bob Berg, there's books, there's so many things through these podcasts for people to turn to that can guide them to help. You know, I have a friend that has suffered from alcoholism and he's gotten very involved in the church mm -hmm. and people are there to embrace you and help you. They don't want your money. They want to help you. That's their, that's their vocation. That is their goal in life to do that. Yeah. And, and like you said, I mean, there's uh and I think that's where the whole the trust building comes in because I, I I'm not sure that uh, that everybody believes that there are such people out there because and especially because we promoted this we, we it's funny it's the other thing the, we promoted this scarcity mindset right I mean where you can see what is it like all these people who want to be influencers or Instagram or whatever it's all about like I need to grab as many people as possible and I need to grab it because if I don't then you're going to get it and then I'm not going to get enough and. And, and I think, you know, there's always been a lot of that about, but I think it's become per pervasive now where people think that there's a finite pie. So everybody believes that they're all always in competition with everybody else. Yeah, it's, I, I don't, because I'm not in that place and you, again, you have a 19 year old, so you have a sensitivity to it. But to me, it turns me off but I see it around me. I see it in my business mm -hmm. in particular. And because so many people will be listening to this, I will not point things out, <laughs> but I just, it's, it's, it's really distasteful to me because it, if you hear certain things, I will use an example, like the Smiths moved into a $5 million house. Well, how does that make someone else feel who can't afford to pay more than 700,000 or 200,000 or, you know, it, it really, like you said, it sets people up for a scarcity deprivation mindset. And, and I just keep wanting to reinvent myself and through conversations like this, help other people to reinvent themselves and to find and to realize that you do not have to let that bring you down. And I think that goes back to the worthiness, authenticity, truth is you, you're only going to find it one place and that's within yourself.
Yeah. And the other thing, the, the other thing, the last thing, uh, Carol, is uh, is finding your, you know, your purpose. What what is, what is your purpose in this world? What is your purpose in your job? Why why do you do your job in the first place? Uh, you know, do you just do it for a paycheck or or do you do it for, or is there something else? Um, but finding that purpose, because I think that's the other part is like people lack purpose. Like, and if you have a purpose, then it doesn't really matter whether the other person has get buys a five million dollar home because maybe owning a five million dollar home that's not really your purpose is it no and i think thank you for really coming into that point because your purpose is to find out what do you love to do mm -hmm. i love selling real estate it doesn't matter if it's a garage space if it's a studio or if it's a big house I love helping people find their dream home. Mm -hmm. And if it's not this week, it's next week. And if I did it for the money, then I wouldn't be making the money. Like mm -hmm. I just, you, you, when you're in your groove, when you're in your lane and you're in your purpose, the money will come. I've had terrible years in real estate as recently as the last two years. <laughs> You know, but guess what? The energy is changing now. And why is that? It's because of getting involved with somebody like Bob Berg. It's because of the meditation, because of the prayer, because I'm in a place now of really learning to love myself and find my worthiness. And what happens with that is I'm sending out good energy and light and people are coming into my life like you, like Noemi, like Bob Berg there good people are coming into my life and good things will happen because of it yeah uh, that's fantastic uh, what a great way to to uh, round this out carol that's a, that's a, i love what you just said there and i think it'll give uh, you know comfort to a lot of people so all of carol's information is going to be below this video but before we go carol if there's anything else you want to add and uh, tell people about you and what you do uh besides sell real estate i'm involved with the sitar arts center I'm now in their leadership committee, which means I'm going to be even more involved with the people in Washington, D.C., with the arts in both low income neighborhoods as well as throughout uh, Washington, D.C. Um, what do I do? I love to work out with my trainer at Align D.C., and I read a lot, walk, and spend time with um, friends and get more and more involved with people like Bob Berg in that community and meeting people like you and Noemi. Yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic. Well, thanks again, Carol. Thank you for watching and listening. See you all again very soon.